Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Maverick's server and we're going to take a look at Open Directory. Now, Open Directory uh, allows you to set up a network directory that allows you to uh, set up network accounts uh, versus just having local accounts on your server. Now, there's a difference between local and network accounts. Uh, local accounts are accounts that you can only set up on a per computer basis. So on your Mac, you could set up uh, many different accounts that people could log into, uh, but they'd have to have access to that Mac because all of the data is only on that computer. Uh, network accounts allow you to take any Mac uh, on your network and log in with your login from your open directory, uh, as long as that, as that computer or that Mac is connected uh, to your open directory, as long as that machine is bound to it. So it expands the ability of your users to be able to use any computer in the household to make that work. Uh, as a result, um, you can access also access more services on your server. Uh, many of the services that we have here on server require open directory or network accounts for them to be accessed. Uh, things like profile manager and things like that, you've got to have a network account uh, in order to make that work. Now, one of the things I would tell you is uh, before you set up any of your users, you're going to want to run open directory first. Because if you don't do that, uh, then the users that you create inside uh, your server are only local accounts. They're not network accounts. And so you'd have to basically delete them and start all over again uh, in order to make them network accounts. Uh, or you could do a, a kind of a complex thing to try to merge them. Uh, so what I recommend is to do uh, the tutorials in order and just do open directory first before you start doing your users and groups. So I just wanted to point that out because that's an important thing. So let's go ahead and uh, set up Open Directory. As you can see, uh, just by looking at the service, there's not a lot happening here. Uh, basically, a big on-off switch, and it's just saying, hey, if you want to see anything here, you need to turn on the service. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start the Open Directory service. And as soon as we do that, it brings down this uh, drop-down with a wizard that's going to walk us through setting up our Open Directory. Uh, now, Open Directory, uh, you've also, you also can see that is uh, LDAP, L-D-A-P. Uh, is going to create an open directory for us, an open directory master. Now you have the option to create an open directory domain, which is setting up an open directory master. You can join an existing one uh, as a replica. So if you've got multiple servers, uh, maybe you're in a business environment and you want to have this uh, basically replicate uh, the open directory that you've already got on another, on another server inside your network to this one, you can do it that way. Or you can restore from uh, an existing open directory that maybe you've backed up as an archive or, or something like that. Maybe you're doing a reinstall and you want to uh, basically import uh, your old open directory that you had backed up in here. That's how you would do that. Now for our cases, we just want to create a new one because we don't have one yet. So we're going to go next. And then what it's going to do is ask for a directory administer account. Uh, now, the administrator account uh, on your open directory is different than your admin account that you might use to administer the server. Uh, so this is, this is a, an entirely different uh, administrator account. Uh, again, it works only for your open directory. So you're going to want to set up something different here, and you're going to want to remember what that password is because that probably uh, should be a different uh, password than what your uh, password is that you use for your regular administrator account uh, for the server when you've logged in. So you want to go ahead and create that. So I'm going to create a password here. Okay, now that I've got that set up, uh, again, you can change the account name if you want to to whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to click Next. And so now it's going to ask for an organizational name. Uh, you know, it's just information to help users identify your server. So you can just put anything in there you want. You can put in, you know, you can put in, uh, you know, Todd's server. Let's do that. And then you put in an admin address, email address if something uh, goes wrong. So if, if users need to contact you, again, this is probably more important in a corporate environment, but uh, for home users as well, you just want to put a, an email address on there that you can get contacted at. So I'll just go ahead and just put in an email address there, and then we're going to click Next. So it says, okay, I'm going to set up uh, a directory, an open directory master with this information. Is that okay? And I'll just say, sure, set up. So now it's going to go about the process of actually creating this open directory master. And uh, it might, might take a few minutes to do that to get everything set up. Uh, but once it's done, uh, you'll notice a green dot down here in the corner. And uh, you'll see information in this panel here once that's going. So uh, I'm going to let this run uh, so it can create the open directory master. And then as soon as it's done, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. 
Okay, here we are. Uh, the open directory is on. It's been started. You see we've got the little green light on the side here. And you'll notice that now I've got my uh, server uh, information there, my uh, domain name for my server. Uh, it says it's master, so this has created an open directory master for me. And I've got it sitting right here. And so you can see also that the status is that it's available. Uh, and what this basically means is that it's available for people to uh, for computers and clients to bind to. Uh, and to be used for network accounts. So it's letting me know that everything's running fine when you see that uh, green light. If anything was wrong, it would give me a, a red light, and I'd have to go and take a look and figure out what's wrong with it. But right now, as far as we can see, everything is, uh, is set, and everything is running fine. Um, so that's ready to go. Now you can see up here we've got this uh, settings area here. We've also got a locales area. Uh, and that would be if you had other networks and things. Like let's just uh, let's click the pencil here. I could go in and I could actually edit, uh, you know, the local name if I wanted to, the subnets for the clients, uh, the servers if I had multiple servers uh, on here, and I could put comments in there. Uh, again, that comes more into play if you've got uh, maybe multiple open directories or uh, you just want to document everything and have it set up right uh, more in a corporate environment, uh, but not anything that you necessarily need to do if you're using it at home, but just wanted to let you know that that was there. Let's go back to settings here. Now, down below, you'll notice I could click the plus button and add uh, another uh, open directory if I wanted to. And so I could have multiples in here if I had, uh, you know, like a server that was managing mul multiple ODs uh, or open directories. Uh, but again, I'm not going to do that because I am just have a single one here. Uh, I could also hit this minus button, and that would basically destroy uh, my open directory, which means it would destroy any users and accounts I had created under it as well, as well as any clients that had bound to it. Uh, it would kill that bind as well. So that's really a last resort uh, if, you wanted, if you wanted to make that happen, uh, you know, needed to start over. Uh, but you do have the option of taking care of that here. Uh, another thing that you've got down here, if I just click the little gear here, uh, I can archive uh, my Open Directory Master, which uh, if I just click that for a minute, uh, it allows me to choose a location for wh where I want to archive it, uh, you know, a pathway of where to create that backup, and then I put in a password for that so that that way uh, no one can actually access it without having the password. But then if I needed to, I could restore my open directory from that archive in case, you know, like I said, I wanted to start over and I needed to, but I wanted to keep all of my accounts and everything in place so I didn't have to do that over again. You could start over, archive it, and then import that archive and be back where you left off. So that's how that works uh, in terms of doing that. Let me just click cancel there. No, I don't want to do that right now. Uh, the other thing you can do here is you can edit the global password policy. Now what this lets you do is it lets you set, set up what the global password policy needs to be for your open directory. So you can set up a disable login on a specific date. So maybe you're setting up maybe a temporary open directory or something like that, uh, or you want to start over. You can set a date at which uh, the login will just uh, be disabled and people can't get into it anymore. Uh, you can uh, disable it after using it for so many days, if it's inactive for so long, or maybe after a user makes too many failed attempts, you can say, oh, password's disabled, it's locked. And so they've got to go through you then to get that re, uh, reinstated. And that's just to protect you against maybe uh, attacks where people are trying to guess passwords to get into your system. You can set that up as a fail-safe to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, you also have uh, other things for passwords. They must differ than your account name or contain at least one letter. Here's where you can set all the details on how they need to set up their password. You know, it might need to contain one numeric character or contain a character that isn't a letter or a number. Uh, contain, you know, the number of characters you want. Uh, has to be different than the last so many passwords used. You can reset it every so often. Uh, so here's where you can, you can set up your global pa uh, password policy for all of your network accounts that are in your open directory and that will sort of take care of itself. You don't have to worry about passwords being used over and over again, uh, those sorts of things. So if you're really concerned about security, this is where you would come to set up those security settings to make sure that your open directory is safe. Uh, I'm just going to leave that alone for right now. Let me just click cancel. So that's pretty much it for open directory. Again, a, a pretty simple service in terms of setup. Um, but as you'll see, this comes into play in so many of the other things that we're going to set up uh, here in the server. Uh, what I'll do in a future screencast is I'm going to show you how to set up network user uh, accounts. And I'll also show you how to bind client machines uh, to your open directory as well so that they become a part of that whole directory service, uh, which will come into play with some of our other uh, different services and things that we do. So I'll show you how to do that. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.